Well, good morning. And welcome to an absolutely glorious day at the end of April here in Cambridge. Now, ignore the sunshine farming that's going on behind me. That's for another video. But today I want to correct a couple of mistakes I made in the video that I put out the other day about different strategies we have for exporting your solar energy during the summer. With that, let's head into the office and I'll point out the mistakes that I made. So for those of you that watched yesterday's video, there were a few errors that I made in the video. And in fact, some of you were very helpful. You pointed them out because sometimes you can stare at a spreadsheet all day long and you still can't see your own mistakes. So we'll go through what those mistakes were in a moment. But what I'm going to do today is I'm going to show you the revised numbers. I'm not going to go through all the strategies, what they are. The original video will stay in place for that, but I will put a link to this video. Now, if you've arrived at this video and you don't know what I'm talking about, there will be a link from this video back to the original one. But please don't take the numbers at the end of that video as advice. So let's dig into what are the mistakes that I made and what are we going to do in this uh, scenario to correct them. So first of all, the first mistake was the price I added the VAT to the strike price of seven pence. That gave us 7.35 pence. Um, it actually turns out if you go into the Octopus app, it says 7p. It doesn't mention VAT till you scroll down a little bit more. Now on the website, it's a lot clearer. So I actually did send Octopus um, a note and just said it would be very good if when you put a price, if you actually put on the same screen, whether it included VAT or not. I also made a fundamental error that sometimes is called double accounting. So what I was doing was charging the cost for importing the energy, and then when you were selling the energy back, deducting the import cost from it, but you'd already paid that as part of the import. So um, our price to, uh, to export imported energy, we've already paid. So therefore, I'm not going to double account for it this time. And that makes a fundamental difference to the numbers. Um, everything else I'm going to leave the same, so um, how much energy my house uses overnight when we're not um, when we're not generating energy, we're actually just bringing it in from the grid. Um, how much will we export in a day at about 40 kilowatts? Um, we'll talk a little bit about that number in a moment, and then we'll also talk about force discharging. So in the comments, some of you asked for some changes. Um, a lot of you were saying about the VAT put my hands up. Now, I'm a great believer that um, don't hide from your mistakes. So hence the reason I'm going to leave the original video in place. I am going to put um, a new thumbnail on it saying that there is a mistake. I'm also going to direct people back to this video um, to see what the mistakes were. But um, it would be very easy for me just to delete that original video, claim it never happened and record a new one, which I, I don't think is the right thing to do. But you guys asked for some changes, so happy to oblige. So the first thing that you said was that your forced discharge, uh, the extra export would happen in the evenings after a full day of solar generation. So in the original model, I was saying, well, if we are going to export 40 kilowatts a day and 10 kilowatts a day of that was going to happen, that you'd only actually generate 30 and then export. I think I was doing that to keep the numbers simple for myself. So in this model, what we're actually going to do is we're going to say you're going to generate 40 kilowatts during the day, during the sunshine, and then you're going to export a further 10 kilowatts or even 20 kilowatts in the evening once the sun has gone down. You also asked me to look at what sizes of inverters. Now, this became really difficult. I can't model every possible size of inverter and battery combination. But there are going to be certain models that just aren't possible if you've got a smaller inverter. So where, where I've gone through each thing, I've kind of tried to give you a minimum inverter size that I think this model would work for. But obviously, that depends on your usage. So if you've got a 3.6 kilowatt inverter, and your house is using two kilowatts, you can only export a further 1.6 kilowatts from your inverter. Um, if you've got a large inverter, this doesn't, this isn't a problem. But I've tried to give you a minimum where I think is kind of reasonable. Um, if you think I'm wrong, please do hit me up in the comments. So strategy one um, is exactly the same as it was yesterday. So 
I believe this is possible with a 3.68 kilowatt inverter. Um, it would mean that you'd have a perfect generation day to be able to get to the 40 kilowatts, but um, I think it should be possible. So this is, we're gonna charge the batteries off peak, uh, we're going to export as much as possible during the day, and we're not going to force export batteries in the evening. So the cost to charge those batteries, because um, obviously when we're not, um, sorry, when we're charging the batteries, we're using energy from the grid to power our house. So we would it would cost us about one pound and four pence, including the standing charge. We would export the full forty kilowatts at fifteen pence per kilowatt hour, which will give us a credit of six pounds. We're not gonna get into the energy arbitraging that I said yesterday where we would be taking that out of our 40 kilowatts and some of it would be at a lower price, that's all gone. Uh, so our total for the day would be four pounds 96 pence in profit. If we did that over the three months, over the May, June, July, uh, summer months, we would make a profit of about 400 pounds, 400 pounds and a penny. So no real difference there to yesterday. Then we start to get into something different because now instead of doing 30 kilowatts of, of solar export plus 10 kilowatts in the evening, we're actually doing 40 kilowatts of solar export plus a further 10 kilowatts. So obviously it's gonna cost us a little bit more to charge our batteries, to refill those batteries overnight. So it's gonna cost us one pound 73. We're gonna export the full 40 kilowatts um, and plus a further 10 kilowatts, which is gonna give us a credit of seven pound 50. When we deduct the cost of charging from that total export, we get a total for the day of five pound 76. So you can see the difference from yesterday because this was a lower price than scenario one. Yesterday, it's a higher price now because we're actually exporting 10 kilowatts more. Uh, over the three months, that will give us a profit of 530 pounds and 28 pence. Now strategy 2A, so you'll see if I drop back one there, our first scenario is just about possible with a 3.6 kilowatt inverter. To do this, to be able to export those 10 kilowatts in those few evening hours that you've got after the sun's gone down, before the, uh, the cheap rate electricity means, you're probably gonna need a five kilowatt inverter for strategy two. Now strategy 2A, where you're gonna export 20 kilowatts, you're probably gonna need a six kilowatt and maybe even a bigger, maybe up as far as an eight, just to be able to get 20 kilowatts exported in that short evening period before the, uh, the, the cheap rate electricity starts again. So in this scenario, um, it's gonna cost you two pounds 43 to refill those batteries each day, uh, but you're gonna make about nine pounds exporting, in this case, 60 kilowatt hours um, of energy during your, your whole day. Again, no energy arbitraging this time. Um, and you know that's gonna give us a total profit for the day of about six pounds 56 or 603 pounds and 87 for the full summer period. Now strategy three and four are that we don't charge the batteries from the grid. We basically run them all day. We use a little bit in the evenings. We pause the batteries during the cheap overnight period and we just run the house from that. And then we continue the next day. Now this does require some time in the next day to be able to refill those batteries to 100% before we start exporting to the grid. And this is where you get the slight risk of if you have a following cloudy day or a couple of cloudy days, uh, maybe there's a summer storm blows through and it's really overcast. So you could get into a situation where you've run the batteries down over two or three days. But it's gonna cost us 69p um, for that small amount of electricity we're gonna to use to run the house overnight um, and obviously the standing charge. We're gonna export as much as possible. So we're gonna export our 40 kilowatts. That's gonna give us six pounds in profit. No energy arbitraging in this scenario. Um, and we're gonna have a total profit for the day of five pounds 31 or 488 pounds and 88p for the three month period. And then our second scenario, again, this is gonna require a bigger inverter just to be able to get the uh, amount of power out. You're probably gonna be looking at a six to eight kilowatt inverter. Um, again, you're gonna only be importing a very small amount of electricity and paying the standing charge overnight at 69p. You're gonna get seven pounds 50 because you're gonna be exporting 50 kilowatts during that day. Um, and again, when you deduct one from the other, that leaves you a profit of six pounds and 81 pence or 626 pounds and 88p. So again, um, if we look at yesterday's graph, now because, let, let me explain what I was trying to do with yesterday's graph before we look at today's graph. So because we were using a fixed 40 kilowatts yesterday, when we were arbitraging energy, 
the percentage of our 40 kilowatts got bigger as we went through scenarios 2 and 2A. So that, that's why the graph goes down there. When we don't do that and we add our 10 or 20 kilowatts extra that we're going we're gonna to forcibly export from our batteries, it makes a fundamental difference to the graph. So what was the best scenario yesterday, which was scenario one, actually becomes the worst scenario today. So in this case, if we look at this, the answer for me would certainly be uh, scenario 2A or scenario 4. So if we look at the two numbers, um, we're going we're gonna to make, you know, maybe £10 a day, sorry, £10 a month more um, in scenario 4 so maybe an extra 30 quid. But it's a much more risky scenario. If we're going to be depleting our battery and on the assumption that we're going to charge it all up the next day so that we can continue to export our 40 kilowatts and we have a couple of cloudy days, then we might not be able to charge the battery back up. And that means we're going to spend a whole the, ne the whole of the next day while it's cloudy just feeding the battery. We're not going to be exporting any energy whatsoever. So for me, I'm probably going to go with a 2 to 2A. Two um, I'm going to charge the battery overnight. I'm going to forcibly discharge the battery, maybe 10, maybe 15 kilowatts. I don't know yet. I'll work out the exact numbers, what works for, for, for our household, um, just to make sure that we've got enough should we run into a cloudy day the next day. It won't be too much of a problem if we've charged the batteries from the grid overnight. So that's it. That's the new numbers. Um, as you can see, they do make a fundamental difference from the ones we looked at yesterday. Um, yes, that was absolutely my fault. I put my hands up. I'm absolutely, I'm very sorry that uh, I led you down the garden path with some of those numbers. But I was trying to do something that would be, I think, more applicable to an average user who's got a, a smaller inverter. Now, obviously, all of those scenarios, um, I can run any one of those scenarios on my system with a, a 10 kilowatt inverter. It means I can push out quite a lot of forced export in that evening period. But I understand not everybody's system is going to be able to do that. That's it for today's video. I hope you don't mind that there were a few mistakes in the previous video. I hope today's video corrected some of those and gave you some clarification as to what I was trying to achieve. With that, I think it's time for me to take these guys out for a walk. It's such a beautiful day. I'll see you back here real soon for another video. Take care. Bye-bye.